Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the How to Make Any Game Mechanics series. If you're new around here, in each episode we randomly choose a viewer's game mechanic suggestion and I try and create it in real time. As a disclaimer, because everything is done in real time, it may not be the greatest method to create this mechanic. So take everything you see here with a giant grain of salt. With that being said, if you're following along and run into any hiccups along the way, there's a link for the GitHub for this project in the description box below, which contains each and every episode. So after giving the wheel a spin, today's suggestion comes from Bathrobaka over on the Discord. They suggested 2D Grenade. This should make for a very great episode, and I'm super excited to get started. So without further ado, let's head on over to Unity. I am inside of Unity, and I created an episode 15 folder called 2D Grenade and a new episode 15 scene. We are inside that blank scene now. For this episode, I'm not envisioning anything all too crazy for the 2D grenade, but I would like it to be a little bouncy, wait a specified time, and explode, giving force to any rigid bodies that might be around it. Hopefully, we not only implement all of that, but come up with something that looks good in the process. So the very first thing that we're going to want to do is create some sort of a ground for our grenade to land on. So let's make a new sprite, so 2D objects, sprites, let's make a square. I'm just going to quickly call it ground. We can then reset the transform and give it a box collider 2D. We might as well also just go ahead and just put it on the ground layer. We can then take our ground, scale it up, we can then move it to the bottom of our scene. And now that we have our ground created, let's go ahead and let's change this blue background. So on our main camera, scroll down to background type and instead of skybox, go to solid color. We can then color pick our background and I'm just going to choose a soft gray. And now that we have our background changed, let's go back to our scene view and we can go ahead and import some sprites. I'm just going to navigate over to my second monitor and grab a crate and grenade sprite. And I'm just going to drag that into the project folder. So with the crate and grenade now in the project, I'm just going to change its settings. So they both should be something like 16 pixels per unit and no compression and point no filter. These are actually pixel art sprites that I made myself, so these settings are reflecting that. So with our sprites now created, I'm going to make a new empty object. I'm just going to call it grenade. I'm then going to reset the transform and drag my grenade sprite to be a child of the grenade parent object. I'm then going to go ahead and click on the grenade and we can go ahead and we can give it a circle collider 2D, so the circle collider 2D, and we can also give it a rigid body 2D. I'm just going to adjust the circle's radius, so just moving that radius down a bit, something like so, and then I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to want this grenade to bounce around a little bit when it hits the ground, so let's go ahead and give it a physics material 2D. So I'm just going to right click in our projects folder and create 2D physics material 2D, and I'm just going to call it grenade. What I really care about is this bounciness up in the inspector, and I'm just going to give it something like 0.5. We can then click on the grenade, and I'm just going to drag the physics material into the collider's material slot. Now when we hit play, the grenade should fall, it should bounce a little bit, and then it should come to a rest. So let's hit play. And sure enough, our grenade falls, and it bounces and comes to a rest. We can then uncheck play, and we can start working on our crates. I'm just going to go ahead and drag the crate into our scene. I'm then going to reset the transform, and I'm just going to add a box collider 2D. This box collider is pretty big, so I'm going to go ahead and just scale it into size. So I'm going to edit the collider and just kind of move it into place. So just making sure I come to every single edge and that should be good enough. To finish off our crate, let's go ahead and give it a rigid body 2D. And now that the crate is made, I'm just zooming out and we can just put it in our scene. So something like this. And I might as well just go ahead and put a few in here just so we can get our grenade to shoot them around. So now that we have a grenade and we have some crates, 
all that's left to do is go ahead and make this grenade explode and via code apply some forces to these boxes. So let's go ahead and let's create a new C sharp script and we can just call this grenade and then we can click on our grenade and drag it onto the grenade. So our grenade script is now on the grenade. We can then open up that script in VS Code. I am inside VS Code and let's go ahead and just talk about how we're gonna get this grenade exploding. So just off the dome, what I think we're going to do is we're going to do something like an overlap circle around our grenade, check for all the colliders that it hits, get their rigid bodies and just apply a force away from the grenade. I think that's probably the quickest and easiest way to do that. We're probably also going to want to have some sort of a timer for a grenade so it doesn't go off right away and it actually hits the ground and bounces before exploding. If we have time towards the end of this video, we'll also go ahead and add in some sort of an explosion. So to start things off, let's go ahead and let's create some variables. So the very first variable we're going to create is our interactable layer. So let's make a serialized field. Let's make a private layer mask. And this is just going to be the layer that our grenade will interact with. We can just call it interact layer. If we think about what other variables we want, we're probably going to want some sort of a radius, explosion force, timer, and then anything else that we may want. So let's go ahead and let's just start with our radius. So a serialized field, private flow radius. And this is going to be the radius of what our explosion is going to interact with. We're then going to want to make another serialized field and we can make a private int and we're going to be making an explosion force. And this is just going to be the force that is going to be applied to every object. We can then add one more variable and this is going to be for our timer. So let's make a serialized field private float explosion time. So we'll just fill this value in the inspector and then we'll use some sort of a private timer and when it reaches the explosion time the grenade will explode. So let's go ahead and make that private variable as well. Float explosion timer. So when our explosion timer reaches our explosion time threshold we know our grenade will explode. So let's make things easy and let's change our update to a fixed update and inside our explosion timer is going to be plus equals time dot fixed delta time. We can then go ahead and compare our explosion timer to the explosion time. So if explosion timer is greater than or equal to explosion time, then we know we're going to want to do our explosion. So as we already stated, what we're going to want to do is use our overlap circle. And all that's going to do is just get the colliders in a certain radius around our grenade. We can then go ahead and do things like check for rigid bodies and apply force. So to start off, let's just make a temporary variable and we can just call it collider 2D and it's going to be an array because that's what our overlap circle is going to want. And then we can just call it collisions. We're then going to make it equal to physics 2D dot overlap circle all. And then inside the brackets, we're going to need a starting position. So our transform dot position. And then we're going to need a radius. So the radius is just this radius variable we created, which again will be set in the inspector. And last but not least, we're going to need our interactable layer. So this is just everything that we want our grenade to interact with. So now that we have gathered all of our colliders, we can just sort through them and get the rigid bodies. So let's go ahead and say for each. And then we're going to be checking for collider 2D. And we can just call it call in collision. So for every single collider in this array, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get our rigid bodies. So if call dot try get component rigid body 2D. So if it's successful, we're going to output a rigid body 2D and we can just call it RB. 
So if there is in fact a rigid body, it's going to output the RB, so we can do things like add force. And when we get the rigid body, we're going to be adding a force to it in the opposite direction of our grenade. So to get that direction, let's make a vector 3, dir, and it's going to be equal to rb.transform.position minus the grenade's transform.position. And this is just the direction away from the grenade. We can then go ahead and say rb.addForce. And inside, it's going to be dir.normalized. And we're going to multiply that by our explosion force. So after all of our explosion logic, we're just going to go ahead and just destroy our grenade. So destroy game object. Again, we can probably add an explosion in and it'll just be right above this line. So we might as well just leave a comment for ourselves later. So we can just say spawn explosion effects. So there's one last thing we're going to want to do before we head back into Unity, and that is draw our radius. So because we have our radius as a float, there's actually no visual representation of where our grenade will be affecting. So let's go ahead and let's make an on draw gizmos function. So a void on draw gizmos. And inside we can just say the gizmos color is going to be equal to color dot red. And then we're just going to draw a wire sphere for our radius. So gizmos dot draw wire sphere. And inside, it's going to start at the grenade's position, so transform.position. And it's going to be the radius of our radius. And that's it. It should now draw a sphere so we can see exactly how big our radius is. And that should be it. With everything done, let's save up and head back into Unity. So back in Unity, let's go ahead and click on our grenade and scroll down to our grenade script. And you can see we have all these variables we need to fill out. For our interact layer, I'm just going to set it to default, which is what our crates are set to. And for our radius, the moment we start increasing this number, you can see we have a red circle which shows us how big our radius is. I'm just going to set it to something like 2.5, and we can move on to our explosion force. For the explosion force, I think something like I don't know, let's go to 50 is probably a good number. And for explosion time, I'm just going to go ahead and set it to something like 2.5. We can then go ahead and hit play. And these crates should be blasted after about 2.5 seconds. So let's go ahead and let's hit play. And our grenade falls, it bounces, and after a few seconds, it explodes, and we have our crates move. This is perfect, this is exactly what we wanted, and I can't believe we got it first try. So let's go ahead and let's uncheck play. And the main thing that this grenade is missing is it's missing an explosion. We all love explosions, so let's go ahead and let's create one now. Let's navigate to our hierarchy and let's create a new particle effect. And we can just call it explosion effect. So for our explosion effect, I'm going to immediately come down to shape and instead of cone, which is just not relevant to what we're doing, we're going to change it to circle. Our particle effect is also configured for 3D, so it's rotated negative 90 degrees. So for our 2D purposes, let's make it rotation zero. We can then scroll down back to shape and make the radius basically zero, just as small as it will go. We can then head on over to emission and we're not going to be using rate right over time, so let's set it to zero. We're actually going to be using burst. So let's hit the plus icon, and then our burst is already set to 30, and as you can see, that is much more in line with an explosion effect. We still have quite a few settings we can play with to make this look just a little bit nicer, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is change our start lifetime. I'm going to change it to be between two constants, and we can use something like 0.5 and 1. And now the effect is just way quicker. And in order to be able to see it a little bit sooner, I'm going to change this duration to 1. 
And now you can see it just plays over and over again, so it's just a little bit easier to tweak these values. I think it's starting just a little bit too slow, so let's change the start speed to something like 10. And yes, I know, that's probably way too quick, we'll just fix that in just a second. I think for just a bit more variation, we can change the start size, so instead of 1, random between two constants, so instead of 1, we can change it to 0 0.5 and 1, and it just creates a bit of a variation. And for extra effect, I'm going to want these squares to be rotated. So let's go ahead and let's go to our start rotation. And again, we can change it to random between two constants, and we can go 0 to 360. And it just makes everything a little bit more chaotic and more in line with an explosion. Moving on, let's scroll down in our settings, and let's limit our velocity over lifetime. So what this is going to do is it's going to basically set the speed to be whatever we set and it's going to dampen it every frame by a certain amount. So if I change this dampen to something like, I don't know, let's go 0.1, you can see it starts out quick and then just slows right down. I think it slows down way too quickly, so I'm going to change this to something like 0.05 and I think that looks way better. So I'll probably just leave it as is. The next thing we can do is go ahead and change our color over lifetime. So let's check the box, open it up, and we will get this gradient option. The first thing I'm going to do is change our alpha, which is this top right control, and I'm just going to make it all the way to zero. So our particle effect will slowly fade out. I'm also going to change the very bottom left option to be a specific color. So this color should be something like yellow. And then the very last color should be something like red. So something like that. I'm also just going to move this red up a little bit so we get just a little bit more color showing before it fades away. We can then close out of the gradient editor. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I could spend hours tweaking all of these values and getting things perfect, but I think this will work just fine. We can then go ahead and we can make this a prefab and then we can delete the explosion effect. So now that we have an explosion, let's open up our grenade script and make it spawn in when our grenade explodes. So back inside VS Code, at the very top of our script, let's make another serialized field. So serialized field, and let's make a private game object explosion prefab. All we need to do now is just instantiate this prefab. So let's scroll down to where we're destroying our game object and we left a nice little comment called spawn explosion effects. Right below that line, we can go ahead and instantiate our explosion prefab at the transform.position, and we can leave the rotation at quaternion.identity. We can then save this up, and let's head back into Unity. I am back in Unity, and I realized we actually forgot one important detail on our explosion effect prefab. So let's go to our project folder and let's open up our prefab. So inside our prefab, you can see it's exploding as per usual. But the main thing that I wanted to come in and change is in our particle system, I want the stop action to be destroy. And what this means is the moment that our explosion is done playing, it'll go ahead and just destroy itself. And I'm also going to want to make sure I uncheck this looping checkbox. This looping checkbox is what's making it loop, which is not what we want for our explosion. And that's all I wanted to come in and change. So let's exit out of our prefab. Let's click on our grenade, scroll down to the grenade script, and assign our explosion prefab. We can then hit play. Our grenade falls. It bounces and then it explodes with our explosion effect. And that's it, we now have a working 2D grenade. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, comment a future suggestion, and hit the subscribe button. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll catch you in the next one.